All right, finally here, um, doing the on the water review of the Conquest. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I know that the first video was out about, I don't know, a month ago, but it's been super cold up here. Um, it's gonna be throwing it on the, the stees. Um, I goes in that the other video. Uh, we're running a 14 pound fluorocarbon right now. That's probably that's what I'm gonna be running on there. So I'll test a few different lures out. Um, test the upper limit, lower limit, and the sensitivity. Probably won't get anything to bite because it's freezing and I'm fishing in a river. But um, yeah, try it out. So the first lure, it's a um, it's a half ounce jig. Then I got a um, that's a power bait thief trailer on there um, that's salvaged from punching. Try this out. I mean, I can tell that there's sand there. Um, there's a lot of ball in my line. I'm going to try to face directly toward the wind. The rod's really responsive on the cast. I mean, you can tell that it's it doesn't flop around at all. It's real crisp, kind of like a mega bass rod. It's just something you just you have to feel for yourself. I mean, I can feel I can feel the difference. Like when I get to the more rocky stuff near the middle. And then like this, so the current goes that way. You can feel like a, when you hit the soft stuff that um, gets kicked out to the outside of the current. I mean, you, you can feel that. Um, it's not night and day. I know the current and stuff like that plays an effect, but. I mean, it handles this jig well. I don't feel like, I mean, even like hopping off the bottom and stuff, I don't feel that it's uh, it's overpowered by any, any means at all. This is probably right in this rod's wheelhouse too, using this, about a half ounce jig or so. Um, yeah, it doesn't handle it too bad. Uh, let me try pitching it too. I mean, yeah, that's it doesn't overload the tip at all, um, which is nice. One thing I can tell this compared to like the NRX line of rods is that it does, it, it kind of casts better, it kind of flicks it out a little bit better. Yeah, I, I think it's a little too early to tell like if it casts that much better, but I can feel the rod does more for casting than um, the NRX lineup did for me. And it bounces nice on the water too. I know holding it in your hand and stuff like that is gonna be a little different, but I mean, dragging this jig and stuff like that, I mean, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel tip heavy or anything like that. Okay, now I'm going to throw on the next lure. Alright, so this is a storm swim bait. It's a smaller swim bait. I think it's total weight's probably like between three eighths of an ounce and a half ounce, maybe. I'm not sure. They can cast kind of weird because they got that big paddle tail on there. But uh, I'll just throw this, see how this feels on this rod. I mean, it casted. It definitely as expected. Um, feels like the rod can definitely handle a little bit more. I'm not saying that um, this lures at the rod's lower range, but uh, I think dropping below this weight here would probably, you'd have to force the rod to cast it. I know it's rated for a quarter ounce, but you kind of get that feeling uh, when, you, when you're casting that the, you're doing more work than the rod is. Yeah, and this is definitely one of those lures. And 
and, and with this I'm, I'm working it kind of slow but I can I can feel when I'm hitting different types of bottom with this um, it's not you know night and day like if I was using braided line but overall this bottom over here is pretty soft so it's gonna be tough to tell that anyway versus if it was like kind of packed down sand or gravel or anything like that and just how in the first video how the taper was I mean I wouldn't be afraid to throw some treble hook baits um, kind of like this swim bait on here um, you just have to adjust your drag accordingly yeah I mean I could feel that coming from uh, downstream kind of like how those those ripples in the sand I mean I can come I can feel what I'm dragging across that with this which is pretty good but yeah I definitely would not um, I know these are bigger treble hooks but I wouldn't be I wouldn't hesitate throwing this bait on this rod um, I wouldn't do it with braid but the taper is definitely uh, accommodating for it okay this is a, um, this is a Matt Zuo square bill it came in a three pack I kind of colored the back um, a little bit blue kind of looks like a bluegill it fades off but these are some of my junk crankbaits that I use which I highly suggest you guys getting some junk crankbaits if you're fishing around stumps and stuff like that I got these I think they're like four bucks for a three pack so um, definitely worth it because if I lose it oh well but they still catch fish they're a little bit finicky on the swim so I'm going to test this square bill out um, just to see how I can feel the bottom. Uh, some people like to fish square bills with faster rods like this, but I generally don't. But yeah, that I mean, it handles the cast well. I'm not trying to whip it up. Yeah, I could. I mean, I have no problem with what's going on in the bottom. I mean, I know it. I know it's sand out there, but I mean, you can see that rod. Very responsive. It's not mushy at all. Yeah, yep. I can just feel that crankbait dig, digging easy. I'm gonna get a little bit deeper water. And I'm gonna keep the rod tip high to hopefully keep the um, keep the crankbait out of the bottom. Yeah, I, I can feel that the wiggle on that crankbait easy. I mean, not that you have to feel that, but um, it, it just goes to see how those vibrations transmit and a good thing too is that you're going to be able to feel if you got a little piece of grass on there you're going to be able to feel if you got um just anything on there yeah this could definitely work like like you guys saw in the first video the taper um there's no problems with it at all um if you're fishing around grass or like kind of a little bit heavier cover with crankbaits it, it could be a good rod for that um, I personally use the Daiwa Steez Flex Light. Um, that's in my setup videos. Uh, I like that for just about any sort of moving bait. This reel seat's comfortable too. Um, it's a lot like the NRX reel seat, except for it's a little bit different. Like I said in that first video, it's just a little bit different angle there, but I mean it's comfortable. All right, so this is a jerk bait. This is in the um, this is an X wrap in that river perch color. It's kind of hard to find color on the shelf, but I like this color a lot. But I know some people, they like to use uh, faster graphite rods for jerk baits, so I'll just throw this around. I mean, yeah, I cast it out there well. There's no, no problems with that. Yeah, I mean, you're feeling every... Yeah, you're feeling everything. Um, the little shimmy that you get with the with the jerk bait when you jerk it, you feel all those shimmies just right away. Like I said before, with the crankbait, um, it's nice to know if you're ripping through grass, if you picked up grass or not, because that's a that's a lot of time that could be wasted um, if you're logging around a jerk bait that got grass on it or you know a crankbait. That those fish, a lot of times they're not going to hit it if there's a big old clump of grass coming off of it. So. Um, which the big grass it's a little bit easier to notice but if you just got a little bit of grass you don't really notice it till you bring it back especially if you're working them aggressive but yeah I think you could instantly feel if you had grass or there's something that wasn't letting that lure move at all alright so this is a weightless 4 inch worm with the worm hook that's it so this is 
Testing the lower range of the rod. I know the reel's capable. Um, the Steve's SVTW. It has a shallow spool in there too, so it's definitely more than capable. Um, total weight with the hook and everything, I bet it's probably 3 16 of an ounce or so. I'm not sure, but test it out. Um, I can tell you the rod does not want to cast that at all. You get that feeling of it's more of just a pendulum to deliver it. It's not, it doesn't load up at all, but this is well below the range that you'd normally use for this rod. I mean, I could loosen the brakes a little bit, but... And I'm casting into the wind as well, but that doesn't really mean anything because I feel the rod's not loading up at all. But I'll try pitching it out there. Yeah, it's, I, I think this is just a stretch, but I mean, in a pinch you could, I mean, you could just, the wind t takes it, but um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it if you're trying to be accurate. All right, so this is a four inch worm, uh, but this one has a 16th ounce shaky head on there. So let's see if that makes a difference. Ooh. That one kind of got away on me. But I, I think this might even be a little light still unless you kind of force it. Yeah, the rod doesn't want to flick it out there. I mean, I can, I can whip it out there and make it happen, but um, I don't think you don't really get accuracy out of that, and it's that has nothing to do with the rod's ability. Okay, um, this is a Texas rig that I pre-rigged because um, I'm using a snap here. Uh, which doesn't work well with the Texas rig. So this is, um, it's a half ounce weight. And then that's a, a missile baits D-bomb on there. This is probably what most people is gonna be throwing. Um, this might be a little bit too heavy. Um, I can't go all the way up. I don't know why I made the leader so long, but. Yeah, the rod definitely helps out a lot. I barely even moved that and it just launched it out there. Which makes me to believe that it's going to be a really good um, half ounce jig rod. Maybe a little bit less, but um, I'll be using it for Texas rigs. Uh, probably not this big. I'll probably use a little bit less. I'll probably use um, like a quarter ounce or even like a five sixteenths. But I know in a, in a pinch this could work. I mean, pitching this out, I don't think it's going to be a problem either. No, I, it doesn't feel overpowered. It's definitely near the uh, the top of the rod's range, though. I think. I mean, this is a it's not a big piece of plastic, but it's it's a decent size. And then plus that tungsten weight on there, it actually might be three quarter ounce tungsten. I'll weigh that and I'll put that on here when uh, I weigh it. But yeah, that just. The rod definitely helps out. I mean, I'm not saying it's, oh, the casting is so much better with this rod versus a different rod, but you can, you can tell the rod's very snappy in that cast and it just, it launches it out there. And then dragging this Texas rig, I mean, I, I could feel, I mean, I could feel the bottom. It's not, it's not as, um, clear cut as if you're on like um, gravel or something like that but I mean you can tell that you're not you get you could tell the difference that you tell when you're not in the mud you can tell when you're out of it but it's not as it's not as clear cut as it would be if it wasn't a, as silty all right this is the um, the buzz plug it's made by Arbogast uh, this lure launches it's about an ounce I think it's a little bit more than an ounce um, it's a really unique bait. Um, it's pretty cheap too. Uh, I used to catch a lot of fish with it, as you can tell, all the tooth marks from the pike. 
I did fit the back hook with a beefier Gamakatsu hook because the, the stock hook's pretty cheap. Yeah, that, this rod handled that no problem. Let me just try to rip one down the river real quick. Yeah, I mean, that's that's quite a bit of line off the spool. And I could set the spool, the reel a little bit looser and stuff like that, but I can lay into it with this lure and it doesn't feel bad at all. So I think I confirmed you can you can definitely go over that three quarter ounce. And even that when I'm like trudging it through the water, the rod doesn't feel mushed at all. And it's accurate with those weights too. Like I throw it both well all three times I've casted it, it's went pretty much where I want it to be. I think it was user error if it wasn't exactly where it was. See right there that was no problem and I know sometimes when you overload rods the accuracy can kind of get away from you but this rod I have no problem as you saw I just landed right on the bank like underneath the little ice shelf there all right so this is a spro frog um, I think this is a 55 size I'm not sure we'll try that out um, let's see how it goes Yeah, I mean, it cast as expected, just fine. Um, I personally wouldn't buy this rod for frogging um, for the apparent reason it doesn't have a whole bunch of backbone, and I think it's a little overkill as far as components and stuff that you'd want to spend on a frog rod. But um, as an all around medium heavy, I mean, it could definitely do it. I wouldn't be afraid to frog with this thing. All right, so you guys saw there um, quite a few different lures that I used. Uh, some some bottom dragging, and I could feel I could feel some subtle differences. Uh, I think if I was in some gravel or a more natural setting than a river, um, I could probably get a little bit more out of it. But definitely, um, I mean, I don't think it's a fluke or anything like that. But I think it could work for crankbaits. Uh, like I said, um, it has that little bit softer taper than the NRX series which leads it to it being more versatile jerk baits uh, what else did I throw in there oh the small swim baits pretty much anything I mean you could throw if you're just gonna bring one rod with you it could definitely be this rod a um, bunch of different techniques you could use don't forget to like subscribe comment all that kind of good stuff I'll be using this rod throughout the um, summer whenever that comes probably Late April, I could start using the rod. Whenever the um, lakes decide to open up, that's when I'll be fishing.